Good morning, everybody. We are on another job location. We're in Luzerne County. You can see the trailer behind me. We had a little tight uh, area to get in here through the, the yard, but we are here. Uh, I'm going to take you on a quick tour of the job today so you can see what we're going to do, and uh, we're going to go from there. All right, so I'll take you for a tour inside. So this is, I, I'm going to say this is about, I forget, 400 square feet or so, something to that effect. But this is a beautiful addition these folks have put on their house out of uh, reclaimed barn wood. And uh, you can just see the architecture in this is, is amazing. But I'm here to do the floor. So um, this is the floor we're going to be dealing with today. This is a, a really good steel trowel finish. They have a couple areas on the floor that they have marked out that they want some little pinholes filled. So we're going to get our equipment in here. We're going to fill these little pinholes, these joints. We're going to saw cut these open. We're going to fill them with the polyurea joint filler. This also is a uh, radiant floor uh, heating system. So you can't put the saw blade too deep or we're going to hit a pipe. We surely don't want to do that or that will change our day dramatically. So uh, we're going to get our equipment in here. We'll get started. Okay, so as we unload, by the way, we're trying to beat the rain. It's, it's just starting to drizzle now. This job has been postponed for months because of rain and then snow. So now finally we're there and it's gonna start raining, which you'll see a little bit in the future here. So now we're trying to figure out how to get the heavy equipment up the ramp. For some reason, my camera cuts out here and you missed pushing the grinder up the ramp. But now we're getting in position. It's of course starting to rain and you'll notice that tire on the generator is going to go flat in about an hour, except we don't know it yet. And of course, it will be a torrential downpour. All right, so we're just getting ready to cut these joints open. These joints are cut. They look pretty clean, but what you don't realize is there's dust inside these joints um, that is going to affect the bond of the joint filler. So there's radiant heat in this floor. If I overcut and cut one of those pipes, obviously you're gonna have water leaking out on the floor. So I'm just checking the depth here with a key. I have about a one inch cut, which is a nice deep cut. So I'm going to set the depth of my machine. I'm at about three quarters of an inch. Okay, so that's the deepest it's going to go. You just want to make sure you don't overcut and create a problem. So I'm going to cut all these joints. This blade, by the way, is not as wide as the joint. So I'm actually going to do two cuts. I'm going to run it down the left edge and then the right edge just to clean both sides of the joint. I'm going to do that real quick. We're going to fill these little holes and then we're going to start polishing. All right, so now we're getting ready to fill all these little pinholes. The joints we cleaned out, I did not fill them yet, obviously. So we have a clear ketchup bottle. You have to be able to see in the ketchup bottle, have equal parts of part A and B marked on the ketchup bottle. If they have markings on it, when you buy the ketchup bottle, that makes it really easy. If not, you know, measure and do the best you can with a, a one-to-one -one mix. So this is the CFS 343 Fast Set um, epoxy, which we use this for cracks. We, in this case, we're using it for tiny little pinholes. Uh, this material is phenomenal. It sets so quick. It allows you to patch everything and get right back on the floor and not lose time waiting for material to set. So simply pour realized I forgot my rubber gloves. Let me run out for rubber gloves. I'll be right back. Okay, now that I got my rubber gloves on. Um, so this is a, a two-part epoxy, uh, part A and B. I already poured the part B in. That's the, the clear amber color. 
Um, and I'm gonna pour the part A in, this is a little darker. When this stuff dries, it got, kind of dries to a, uh, a grayish color and it changes color when it cures. It's not gray now, it's when it cures. So you just put the lid on, you shake this up a couple times, and that's it. Now I'm only putting a couple drops in these because these are small little holes. So I'm just gonna run around. I know it's hard for Jeff to follow me while I'm doing this, but any little holes I see, I'm just doing a couple of dribbles. And what I'm actually gonna do is we're gonna come by with a, a floor scraper and shave these off um, once this stuff sets before we uh, before we grind. If we run the grinder over these and there's a, a big mound, it's gonna hook it and it could pull them out. So we're just gonna go around real quick like that. Fill these little holes. And this stuff sets really quickly, so you gotta, you gotta move. So at this point, I'm just going to speed this up a little bit just because uh, filling holes is not that exciting. But this material sets in about, uh, I'm going to say, a minute and a half in that ketchup bottle. So you need to run around quickly and patch these holes before the stuff sets. That's why you only ever see me mix up two inches max inside that ketchup bottle. You will actually feel the bottle start to get hot after about a minute and a half and, and once that happens, you literally have seconds to get rid of this stuff. So sometimes you're better off just taking the cap off and dump it in the trash can before it sets on you. Then you can reuse the ketchup bottle. You can reuse those maybe eight or ten times, depending how quickly you're going. It's nice if you have cracks because you can move through the volume a little quicker. With the holes, it's kind of slow going, doing a couple drops here and there. I don't know if you can see this stuff starting to smoke, but literally... I'm going to see if I can catch this in midair. Oh, there it goes. And it's just starting to set now. It's, it's actually... Mm. That's it. It was a liquid 20 seconds ago. So now, of course, this has to set up. It's going to get hard. Right now, it's like a hard gel. But this stuff sets really, really quickly. So that was that. Now, you can reuse these ketchup bottles if you... Uh, Play your cards right here, you can pull that out and uh, then you can reuse this on the next batch. But it, it also helps too if you have like a small nail with you. Sometimes these holes get clogged up, you can just poke a nail in there as you go. That way you can keep reusing the same ketchup bottle for a little bit at least. So that was it, that's the 343. Now we're gonna fill the joints with the polyurea joint filler. Then we're gonna shave everything and then we're gonna start polishing. All right, so I have my uh, DeWalt dual cartridge caulking gun here, which is phenomenal. I'm gonna purge the air out of this thing. And you always watch the top of this static mixing tip. I'm just gonna push down on my knee and you see the material came up there. It's only clear. This is why you have to purge it. That's only, I don't know if it's part A or part B, but it's the clear part. So now I'm gonna lock this and I'm gonna to start to purge this and I'm gonna turn it upside down and pump that into that bag. Now it's gray. If I were to put that in a joint, that would never set. That would just sit there like, I don't know, oil forever. And got the tip in there. A little bit low, I'm just gonna go back, drizzle a little bit there. Very convenient on your hand if you had to pull the trigger on a dual cartridge gun, it probably would have been a hundred pumps. And this stuff is not necessarily easy to pump because it's fairly thick. I'm going to purge the air on the next one. Now, this time I'm going to start next year.
Right, so right now, Jeff is shaving these repairs off. So you just take the scraper and gently shave them off. And then once we continue our polishing process, we can go right over it and it won't tear those out. This is a very impromptu video. I'm trying to show how this stuff drains into these little cracks here. I don't even know if I have this in focus. I'm trying to hold the camera and do this at the same time. But you can see in the light there, how the epoxy runs in there. So you just kind of keep going back and forth on this. This crack was really fine, so I couldn't even get sand in it. Ideally, you want to put fine sand in these cracks first. But you can see how that drains down. So this is all going to be ground off, so you're not going to see all this overflow. But you can see it's starting to clot there. You see the little air bubbles? That's normally a sign that it's getting full. Viewers apparently love detail work, so I'm trying to show you in great detail what we do here. Stuff is starting to get hot in my hand. It's barely draining down now, so we're just about done. You won't even see that epoxy where it was there. All right, so now we're shaving these joints. With the radiant heat in the floor, the material sets up a lot quicker than normal, and this stuff sets fast to begin with. So I want to say we're like 10 or 15 minutes past the joint installation, joint filler installation, I should say. So now we're just going to shave these joints, and then we're going to start our polishing process. Okay, so all the joints are, are filled now. All of our little repairs here are shaved. So when we run the grinder over them, it's not gonna rip that material out. So we're all set. Jeff's gonna hook up the, uh, the large grinder right now, and we're gonna run the 40 grit diamond over the whole floor. I want to explain where they put these grinders. These are planetary grinders. So everything goes in a, a, a like a planetary motion. So I just want to show you the pattern. When you turn these, you can see how the heads rotate like this. So when we start grinding, we always refer to it as a left edge and it spins this way. So our left edge is cutting forward. So it actually digs in a little deeper on the left edge than the right edge. So we refer to it as a left edge. So normally when Jeff starts, we'll go in a clockwise fashion doing the left edge first. It cuts a good pattern along the left edge. Okay, at this point, we're just about ready to start grinding and Jeff and I discuss our game plan. We decide it's better to take a weight off of the grinder than have it grind too aggressively. Once you grind too aggressively and you're too deep, you can't put it back. So we took a weight off. Jeff's gonna start here, which in another 30 seconds or so, we're gonna realize we need to put the weight back on anyway. But to be safe, we take the weight off. So we start cutting, the first thing you do is you look at the scratch pattern, or lack of scratch pattern as the case may be, and we realize um, fairly quickly that it's not quite cutting as deep as we want it to. Now we have the softest compound diamonds available on here for extremely hard concrete, and it's barely cutting it. So I put the weight back on again, and we start going. So one thing I have to say about these first grinds is they are painfully slow. 
and Jeff knows that even better than I. Jeff is normally behind the grinder. Um, that's, that's his specialty for sure. So um, we're taking our time getting the feel for this concrete, barely moving, and um, you always need to check your scratch pattern. So I'm going to run out. I'm going to get a, uh, a brush here, and I'm going to start checking the floor behind the grinder to see if there's deep scratches in the floor, if we're getting the deep valleys, you know, what we have. It's very important that you see it early so you can correct it. I know it's a bit noisy in here, I just wanted to show this. I mean, we're basically in somebody's finished house here. And it's very important that you have dust free equipment. I'm going to get really close here. It's going to be a little loud. Okay, so we just got done grinding the whole floor with the 40 grit diamonds. I did the edges with the hand grinder. I'm gonna flip the camera around, I'll pan around so you can see exactly what that looks like. What we wanna to do to make sure this is consistent is we're going to grind with the 40 grit again, going perpendicular to the first grind. That way we don't have a pattern in the floor and everything looks consistent. Um, we always say when we're polishing concrete, consistency is the most important part. Um, you don't wanna see you know, patterns in the floor at all. I'll flip this around, I'll show you what we have. All right, so here's the edges ground by hand. Now, there's no dust on this. That, that hand grinder really sucks all the dust up. There's a slate film on the rest of the floor, but uh, already there's no scratches in here. So we're going to have to go over the edges one more time um, with a 400 grit diamond as we go around here. But this is what we have now. If you look really close here, I mean, you can barely see any scratch in the floor now. But this is turning out really nice. Um, good consistent stone exposure. The uh, owner here built a, a little wooden bridge here for us to go into this back room back here, which worked out really good. It's the first time we did that. And uh, surprisingly enough, it didn't tear that wood apart. So we're gonna get set up with the other 40 here and we'll get at it. So as we start cutting, uh, again, we're trying to keep those diamonds cool. So I'm misting a little bit of water in front of the grinder there just so we get a good cut. Okay, so we just got done running the second 40 grit diamond. Again, we ran it perpendicular to the first pass. I know it's very hard to see on video, but that's our stone exposure. I think this is gonna turn out beautiful. This concrete is really, really nice. We're just getting ready to do the uh, 80s now. And again, the 80s now, we're gonna run perpendicular to the last pass. So, uh, we're going to set this on time lapse, show you what we have. Okay, so we just got done running the 80 grit diamond now. We ran over the whole floor, real nice slow grind. This floor is going to turn out really good. It's, uh, it's showing some good stone exposure, consistent stone exposure, which is what we want. So I'll flip this around, I'll walk you around a little bit and show you. Okay, so again, I know this is very hard to see. Here's a, a dust film on the floor. Again, there's no airborne dust. I mean, this is open to the uh, customer's house here. 
unfortunately, there's no dust blowing through the air, but uh, this is really, really looking good. You can see the stones we're gonna get there. That's it, so we're gonna take a quick lunch break and we're gonna run the 150s and I think we're gonna call it a day. All right, so we just got done with our lunch break. It's been raining all day, so we're gonna run these 150s now. We're gonna put the densifier down and then we're out of here. I'll put this on time-lapse now, you can watch. surface before we densify and then we're done for today. So this is what we're going to run next. We're switching to uh, a pad and then after that we have uh, 100, 200, and 400 resin bond diamonds, but that'll be tomorrow. Okay, so we just got done spraying the densifier over the whole floor, it's still puddled behind me here. So uh, we're going to call it a day with that. I'll walk you around so you can see that a little closer. All right, so you can see the floor is still wet with the densifier. So this is a, a clear chemical, it just penetrates in there and it hardens the uh, concrete. And when we're done, the actual polished concrete is about 30% stronger than what the concrete was before we started. So it looks dark now, it's all patchy just because this is on here. Tomorrow morning we're going to come in, there's going to be a white film on here, and then we're going to continue grinding uh, up to 1500 tomorrow. So we'll finish tomorrow for sure. And of course outside, it's pouring, which is kind of where we're stopping now. Uh, for us to bring equipment in, we're going to track water inside, and you don't want water on the floor at this stage of the game. So tune in tomorrow, we'll finish up. Day two, right now I have Jeff behind me. He's running the 100 grit Raisin Bond Diamonds. I'm gonna give you a little close up so you can see how that works. So that's the uh, 100 grit. You're getting some reflection, not much yet, but it's gonna start to pop soon. So we're gonna run this, then we're gonna switch to the, well, I have to do the edges, and then we're gonna do the 200 grit. Let's keep going. Okay, yeah, Jeff just got done running the 400 grit resin bonds. I'm just going to show you a change out here so you see what these are. So the resin bond diamonds, uh, they're exactly what, what they are. These are uh, diamonds impregnated in, in resin. So these are for, for the honing process, let's put it that way. So now we're switching from the 400 grit resins this is an 800 grit diamond impregnated pad. So there's little diamonds in these ribbons here. Um, and this is just part of the cleanup process. So this is the 800 grit pad. I'll put these on, I'll show you how to do that. Give 
my head. When it turned like that, they lock on. And that's it. Okay, so we just ran the 800 grit pad, and then we actually ran, it's a 3000 grit, we call it a cleanup pad, basically to take any remaining dust off the surface. That way when we put the guard down, we're not putting dust in the guard, which can leave little um, like smear or track marks on the floor. So I'll flip this around, I'll show you what we have. And now you can see the gloss. So right now this is actually technically an 800 grit grind. But again, there's still some dust on the surface here. You can see that reflection. That's a really, really nice reflection. This is going to turn out really good. So we're going to put the guard down next. We're going to burnish and then we're done. Okay, so we just got done burnishing the floor, so now we're done to a 1500 grit finish. I'm gonna flip this camera around, I'll take you for a walk through here and show you everything and uh, let you see what, what we have. Okay, so here is the finished floor. It's got fantastic reflectivity. There's still a slight dust film on this. It seems like you chase this real fine dust around for a little bit, but this floor turned out really, really nice. So as I said in the beginning of this video, look at this architecture in this. This is just a beautiful addition they built on their house here. This is a reclaimed Pennsylvania barn wood. And uh, it's not done yet, almost. I know the floor was a, a big thing they wanted to get done here. So uh, we actually tried to do this in November. Winter came, snow came, I couldn't get in the yard. And uh, now it's March and finally I was able to get in here. So this is just a beautiful space. You're gonna have many, many years on this floor. So thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you for watching. Uh, as always, if you like what you see, please subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell or the like button or both or anything, whatever. I appreciate all your support. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.